So on page 11 of articulations, you write, the story changes when we own our pain. Either we work through our story or our story will work through us. So, or we work through our story or our story will work through us. So let's say your story is very painful for you and you have put this armor around you. How do we still work through our story when it is painful? Well, ideally you do it with a qualified therapist that you feel safe with. Um, and of course it depends on how much material there is and how deeply painful the material is. And you want to engage that process when you're ready for it. You don't want to come in too hard and fast because that could be re-traumatizing and not so easily integrated. Um, but you know, you find if you can someone to work with, if you can't afford that people around you that can support your process um, you know, there's all kinds of stuff online in terms of techniques to find your way into your body and into those feelings and, you know, do your best to move it on through or to make sense of it or to garner the insights that, that live at the heart of it. Depends what it is. I mean, not everything is about release. Sometimes it's just about attunement, connection, on making sense of it, understanding how it's affected the way you've lived your life and the way you've moved through through the world. Um, there's a lot of levels to the reclamation of the material and to the interpretation of the material. But, you know, when you're ready, create space to get in there slowly, surely, methodically, and determinedly if you feel like you're up for it. So you actually need to be ready for it, first of all. Well, I think <laughs> it's important. Like, I think there's a reason I did talk therapy for years before I was ready to engage my body more deeply. I think that, I think partly I wasn't ready and sometimes it's circumstantial. Again, I'm back to the things we're talking about. If you're having to push your way through some practical, annoying job all the time in order to feed your kids, uh, it's difficult to create space for deep traumatic excavation work because you don't have space to be with the feelings. You don't have time or space to integrate them. Um, so there's a lot of factors, you know, I, I consciously and deliberately created space to engage my process. Not that you ever engage your whole process, but I really prioritized that. I had this idea in my mind, I guess, in my body at a pretty early age that the more work I did in those places, the better my life would be later. Um, you know, and not everybody feels that way in Western culture. People want to do five or six sessions and then they want to get back into the world. And I just saw this as a lifelong transformational process, not because just because there was so much trauma inside of me, but also because I was in a world. I mean, Alexander Lowen used to do 300 tantruming kicks every morning, mm -hmm. even as an elderly man. Because not just because of his old material needing to be cleared, but also because of the culture that we live in, which denies the animal body, denies the sensual body, denies the feeling body, keeps us trapped in our head tripping inside of our minds all the time, or trapped in a spiritual construct that has us trapped in our heads, blaming the mind, witnessing the mind, but never dropping down into the body because patriarchal spirituality doesn't want to go near the body. Um, so everywhere we go, we're set up to avoid this material. So you want to develop practices in your life that continue sometimes to force you back inside of your body um, and then to figure out how to function in your body with the rest of the world, which is, I think, what we're talking about, the challenges of being in your heart and being in a mind-centered world.